Hi guys, this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to look at a very popular and also very important pattern to coordinate your hands really well with. We call it the reggae piano pattern because it's inspired from the reggae genre. Stuff like that. Uh, we are reminded of artists like the great Bob Marley and uh, so on and so forth. Right Now, all of these hit points and all of these patterns are produced by all sorts of instruments. It could be a drum uh, arrangement. It could be done on the guitar. It could be done on the marimba or any kind of you know Caribbean instrument which produces the genre really well. It could even be done by the singer. So, uh, the pattern which I have for you is a simple but very effective pattern to get the essence of the genre onto the piano. So even if you're at like a beginner level, I think you can get this. Or if you're at a more intermediate level, do stay along for the entire lesson because the exercise will get very, very interesting. Okay, so let's first start with some basics of how I'm counting the pattern and then let's take it forward. Before we do, it'll be great if you can give our video a like Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave us a comment with stuff you'd like to learn. And you can also consider downloading some of the notes or rather all of the notes on our Patreon page where we provide the notes, some of my handwritten uh, points of instruction and also notation whenever the lesson demands. Right, so let's get cracking with the exercise. The first thing you'd like to learn with respect to reggae is what we call as the swing pattern or the swing time feel. So whenever you count something, let's say we divide the beat into four units and we go, let me use my shaker to demonstrate, 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4. Now in this instance, the division is exactly equal. It's 25% of the beat, is it 25 mark, the E, 1 E. And that would be 1 E and, that's the 50% mark of the beat. 1 E and a, uh, that'll be the 75% or the 3 fourth point of the beat. Now what we do with reggae or as well as a lot of other dance rhythms is we swing this. So instead of doing 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 4 E and a, we do 1 E and a, uh, 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 right? 2 E and a, 1 E and a, 2 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 so either we emphasize a lot on the E's or the E's because those are what give you that vibe. E, 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 right? Or we emphasize on the E's. And a more common thing or a more uh, pulsating or a supporting rhythm would be some musician would be playing the chords at the end. So that will be and, 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 and. And right, right. So, you, and so you need to get these subdivisions first. And we are swinging. It's not da 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 da. It's da 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 da. So let's do that again. Ands first. And 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 is e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e Right? So there we have it. Those are your points. So this entire pattern kind of has those hit points in mind. So you can't play a reggae pattern with just the downbeats. You can't do one, two, three, four. That will not be anything. It won't. So a genre of music also is dependent or defined by these patterns, these characteristic assortments of hit points over a beat division. So in this case, you're dividing by four, you're swinging it. And you're focusing on specific hit points. You divide the beat, define whether you want to swing it or straight it. And last but not least, you devise a pattern. A pattern is obviously something which doesn't involve everything. If you do ja 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 ja, if you play everything, it won't work so well. So you have to define which points you want to accent or play or hit or emphasize. Okay, so that's about the pattern. And with this pattern, we are going to bring in both our left hand and our right hand. And a couple of things to note, the left hand is going to focus on the roots of the chord primarily, as well as the fifth of the chord uh, in some occasions. So for example, if I take the C major chord, I'm playing it as G, C, E in the right hand. The left hand 
you're going to want to figure out where your root is the root of any major chord or minor chord is the name of the chord so c major means you play c in the bass okay and then the fifth you either go five scale steps or you go a perfect fifth if you know your intervals or just figure it out the circle of fifths will also help you find the fifth okay that's your five c g so you want to get acquainted with the root and the fifth and the right hand is just going to hold chords so i repeat right hand will do chords left hand will play the root primarily and at some important groovy points or accent hits it will play the fifth and another thing we are going to do in this lesson is to look at the concept of a ghost note as we call it at least as drummers call it so a ghost note is just a very soft hit for something maybe you do right it's soft and staccato so you hit that a bit soft you don't want to do so you in this exercise we are never going to play the fifth as loud as the other stuff it's going to be really soft and really choppy that's what gives you the ghost vibe on the piano uh, very difficult actually to think of ghost notes on an instrument like the piano because you don't have the percussion effect of the guitar where you can just mute the strings and it gives you that choppy nature right so on a piano the only way to do it i guess is manage your volume and manage your uh, uh, the length of the note so so i'm going to teach you that sort of a thing in this lesson so we'll do it in stages there'll be three stages so step 1 will be very simple you do the root at the 1 and the 3 of the bar so you go 1 e and 2 but you need to count you need to count the four hit uh, division points 1 e and 2 e and 3 e and 4 e and 1 e and 2 e and 3 e and up a tin the tin the the dun the and so the where was that 1 and the 3 so you could even consider it as a two beat phrase instead of like a a four beat phrase if that works simpler for you so you go one e and a two e and a three e and a four okay and a four yeah. choppy it's a groovy pattern so one e and a two e and a three e and okay so the right hand now joins the party by playing the ands think of it as only ands for now and that's very very characteristic or as we say idiomatic for this genre reggae okay so you go one e and Two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and right a one e and a two. That's essentially what a guitar player does very often in a reggae ensemble. You will find the guitar player just playing the chord progression, but only playing those uh, and divisions. You know, cha, 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 and they may add some spicy ghost notes as well, which I'm sure some of you know if you've heard. reggae music okay so let's do that again 1 e and 2 e and 3 e and 4 e and 1 e and 2 e after a while forget the counting feel it e. it's also good to move your body in some way with the music so when you're moving your body if you're swinging maybe you can move sideways it feels a lot better and uh, also by moving your body especially your upper body it gives you the sense of the pulse so you never lose the pulse when you're playing even if you do it slowly it's fine but don't lose the pulse 3 e and 1 e and 2 e and 3 right you can tap your leg as most musicians do but i would highly recommend for this genre for the groovier genres you need to move your upper body like your head and well this whole area so Okay, that's the first thing you get. So let's just do the basic pattern. Left hand does what again? It does the one and the three of the bar of four. If you're counting four beats, the right hand just does every single and. You can generally do it staccato throughout. You you can sneak in a couple of longer hits as well, like. But I generally like staccato throughout. Remember the swing at all time. Right, swing, 
1 and 2 okay so let's move on to the addition now all the flavors or the spices which we are going to add are going to revolve around what we just learned so what we just learned will never change so the spicy stuff now will be ghost notes so the first ghost i'm going to do will be i'll play it and then teach you and e. so that's at the e of the two or as well as the E of the four, if you're looking at over a, a four beat bar. So I'll play it and then show you. The and two, E and two, E and three, E and the and two, E and three, E and four, E. So what's happening at the E of the two and the E of the four? I'm flicking the G, playing it very soft and choppy, legato, and also kind of flicking my finger a bit this side, a bit away, like sort of bringing it back to the palm now that gives me a more like a very pronounced uh, staccato effect a very percussive is almost drum like because the attack is there but it's so short that it's almost drum like it's almost percussion like in terms of sustain because a drum instrument doesn't really have that much sustain right so one knee and two e and three e and four e and you could also maybe make your right hand a bit more dynamically uh, engaging by playing choppy staccato and then follow it up with a legato that'll contrast what's going on in the left hand really well and don't forget the root which you're playing with your pinky can be nice and long you can drag the note because now you have choppy stuff so to make the staccato stuff for the softer stuff more pronounced make the other stuff even more longer and more louder you know that's how you create the the impact or the sound don't focus on something which needs to be staccato maybe the other things can be even more legato you know so Let's emphasize the pinky, which is playing the root, a little bit more longer. Yeah, I'm also emphasizing every alternate right hand hit in my C major chord here. And two. the swing so that's what the ghost does it just gives you that obvious swing because i'm hitting something at the e's or the r's okay so now let's do this over a chord progression right uh, common pop reggae pop chord progression could be like a one five six four so that's c major g major a minor f major you can see how i'm playing it g c e G B D A C E A C F with some nice inversions. G C E G B D A C E A C F. Once you get a grip of those four chords, we start putting it all together with the reggae rhythm we learned, with some ghosts at the G. So, I'm changing the chord every two beat cycle. Um, you can even do it every four beat cycle. Like, right? I'm going to do it every two beats. This reminds me of my favorite Bob Marley song. Two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a two. Okay. Two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three It's also nice if you can practice singing along with it. It will really help your independence. Or maybe this is your goal to be like a pianist who plays some awesome rhythm backing, some chord patterns, and of course the primary job for you is singing. Which uh, my suggestion would be, 
practice reggae really hard practice this pattern really hard so that your singing is not compromised so your your primary role as an artist for those of you who sing will be your voice so the piano is always a support so when you sing it without the piano or with the piano your singing voice should not sort of deteriorate it should be even better maybe in in some instances which i find uh, you can actually sing a lot better when you're playing the piano and singing as opposed to just singing you know without any chordal reference because the chords and the rhythm will inspire you not just in what notes you should sing but also in the way you sing in the feel in the dynamics as we say okay so try to get some singing into play so let's just revise the pattern again the and to e okay so that's the e of the two with the ghost the two e. and then i wish to change my chords i have decided to do 1 5 6 4 that's my the 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 pattern the two e and the three e and the four e and a minor mm, 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 f mm, c na 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 na, na g everything's gonna be all right now everything's gonna be all right now no woman no cry mm -hmm. or you can do that jason maraz song as well right of the words na 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 da na 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 right so this is a very good foundational pattern uh, one more thing before i uh, sign off with the lesson would be take the very last beat of the phrase or which is that last beat or the penultimate beat before the chord changes so that will either be the a uh of the two or the a uh of the four depending on how long you're taking per chord is it four beats or is it two beats so if it's a two beat equation uh, then what you could do one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a so what am i doing there i'm having some fun with the a's and what am i playing at the a uh? again i am playing yet another ghost note but it is the fifth note of the next chord So if the next chord is G major, ni and two e and a, sounds a bit funny when I freeze frame that note. One ni and two e and a. So that D should be ghosted, very choppy, but it is anticipating the G, which is going to come in at the one of the uh, next bar or at the three if you're doing half bar changes. One ni and two e and a. Let me do this first over the whole bar. One e and two e and three e and now a e and two e and three e and four e and a. Okay, let's do that again. One e and two e and three e and four e and a. The two e and three e and four e and a. And two e and three e and four e and a. Okay. Oh, I missed that. One e and two e and a. And two e and three. Now I'm just going to change it every two beats. Everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be alright now, yeah. Everything's gonna be alright now, yeah. Na 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 na. You see how long my pinky is playing the root? It's lasting longer. The other fingers are very choppy so that creates the reggae vibe so i just thought we could bring in this rhythm and you can do it in different stages even if you're if you do the first pattern which i taught you without the ghost sounds great if you ask me you can play this for any reggae song so we just added the ghost notes for more maybe intermediate players or in the long run to add some bells and whistles into the piano performance ultimately you're trying to do a solo piano pattern or a solo piano accompaniment pattern is just you on the piano and a singer so you're trying to emulate everyone you're trying to do what the guitarist would do your your right hand is literally the guitar your left hand is like a drummer and it just comes in together and then you add 
flavors you add embellishments which are those ghost notes and uh, i'd be very happy to do more and more lessons on the reggae genre because i really enjoy the genre things like passing chords things like bringing in some melody things like whatever more rhythm patterns why don't we do that so hope you guys have found the lesson useful practice your reggae chops really hard you can also record yourself playing anything and uh, put it up on your instagram and you could tag me at jason zack and uh, i will definitely give it a listen because i that's the only way i can sort of see what you guys are doing so uh, put it up on your instagram tag me put it on as we call it stories or reels or whatever you like to use and um, yeah let's let, let me see what you have to do with reggae okay and uh, suggest stuff in the comments don't forget to leave us a comment with what you'd like to learn in the future we'd be very happy to consider lessons in fact this lesson was suggested by you guys a lot of you suggested that we do reggae so i figured let's do a video on that and then maybe this is definitely this feels like it's the first of more which we can do with reggae music dance music and some funk music perhaps uh, in the long run okay guys again don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell for notifications you can also consider following us on patreon where you'll be given a bunch of these notes for every lesson and also be part of a extended learning community cheers